In this series of modules from Little Fuse University, learn how Little Fuse, the global leader in circuit protection, can help you design electrical safety into your facility by utilizing our extensive experience in helping customers improve their electrical systems and safety of installations. Our technical expertise and capabilities combined with innovative products can reduce your electrical hazards while increasing electrical safety. Codes and standards committees continue to build on the growing trend to increase safety and little fuse products including current limiting fuses, high resistive grounding systems, and arc flash and other protection relays allow you to become compliant and maintain compliance with these regulations. Be sure to review the entire list of available topics included in this Little Fuse University series of modules for more ways to design electrical safety into your facility. In this module from the Little Fuse University series, Electrical Safety by Design, we review some of the important reasons why considering electrical safety in your designs can reduce arc flash and electrical hazards and benefit everyone involved. To begin, this module reviews why electrical safety is important the effects of electrical hazards on workers and business, and how OSHA and NFPA 70E are involved in this discussion. Now I'll turn things over to Ken, who will share some statistics that validate why electrical safety is so important. Why is electrical safety important? Well, according to the National Safety Council, they say over a thousand people die each year from electrical accidents. Now if you think about that for a little while, a thousand people per year is something like three people per day that die from electrical accidents. So don't become a statistic, by the way. You know, you could go to work one day and you and two fellow workers may not go home. The Safety Council says that up to 10 arc flash accidents occur each day in the U.S. and over 2,000 workers are sent to burn centers with burns from an arc flash. We're going to talk about arc flash and how to reduce the, uh, the possibility of an arc flash and how to reduce the incident energy which, is, which causes people to get burned. OSHA said that 80% of electrically related accidents and fatalities among qualified workers are caused by the arc flash or the blast. Only 20% get killed or injured by the shock. The rest get killed or injured by the arc flash or the results of one. According to a recent survey of industrial uh, organizations, who responded to the question, has your organization had an arc flash incident or accident in the last five years? Over two-thirds, or about 66 percent, of the respondents said yes, they had an arc flash incident or accident in the last five years. Only 34 percent said no, they hadn't. So obviously there's a, a reason to design safety into your, your system to avoid accidents of this type. Here's a slide that shows the, the results of an arc flash or shock, courtesy of OSHA, of what can happen to people. Severe burns and vision, vision damage, hearing loss, broken bones, internal damage, a whiplash, brain injuries, lacerations, and death can occur. You know, even a small arc flash can kill a worker if they're up on a ladder 30 feet. It may not be the arc flash or, or a shock that kills them. It would be the sudden stop at the bottom of the ladder. So make sure your workers are using adequate fall protection if they're working in elevated areas. Besides injuries, now companies uh, have to go out and replace equipment. So if you don't design safety into this uh, equipment to begin with, uh, you face the possibility of uh, someday having to replace the equipment, which can be very, very costly. Uh, not only replacing the equipment is costly, but usually the downtime. If you're in an industry that, uh, where the downtime is like millions of dollars per minute, an accident of, of some sort like this uh, could cost millions and millions of dollars. So obviously if we can avoid anything like this by designing safety into the system uh, at the beginning, certainly we'll save a tremendous amount of cost. The other reasons to consider designing safety into, the, into your systems is obviously we just talked about preventing injury to the workers uh, first and foremost. Uh, but it also uh, prevents or reduces time off accidents. So obviously if there's an incident or accident that occurs and someone gets injured, uh, they will be uh, off from work for a time or times. And obviously if we can reduce the uh, dangers and hazards, uh, you will have less time off accidents that occur. Also, uh, by designing safety into the system, you reduce the cost of the equipment damage. Uh, as we just saw a slide or two ago, the equipment can be damaged and very, very costly to uh, replace. And certainly we want to comply with codes and standards. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about OSHA standards and uh, NFPA standards uh, coming up next. But 
obviously we, you, you're uh, required to meet the codes and standards that, that exist. And the other advantage of designing safety into the system is you reduce the cost of downtime. As I mentioned earlier, downtime can be very, very costly per minute, per hour. Uh, so it increases the reliability of your electrical system. And if you do have a problem, you can quickly identify the problems and correct them. And the other thing uh, designing safety does is it eliminates or reduces the amount of PPE that the workers may have to use uh, personal protective equipment to restore power to the faulted circuits. So uh, if you can design in safety and uh, go from a hazard risk category 4 or an incident energy of uh, 30 or 40 down to an incident energy of 5 or, or 10, it reduces the amount of PPE required, personal protective equipment. So the workers are, are able to restore power much more quickly, uh, they're happier, they don't have to wear such heavy duty PPE, uh, and the job gets done that much quicker. This is uh, what OSHA calls their hierarchy of controls. This is how OSHA looks at a problem. If they were to come into your facility to uh, investigate uh, something that has happened or just to look at your system, this is how they uh, view a problem. First of all, they say, Mr. Uh, employer, eliminate the hazard at the source. Uh, and those are what they call engineering controls. Get rid of the problem. And in fact, that's what we're talking about dur during this series. We're trying to engineer safety into your system and into your products. Uh, the next thing that OSHA talks about, after uh, you do everything you can to eliminate the hazard, if you cannot, OSHA recommends or, or expects employers to reduce the hazard or the worker exposure to the hazards, and those are called safety or process controls. So if you design safety in, uh, to begin with, uh, you're covering both things. You're, you're designing safety by engineering and also implementing safety or process controls. And the last thing that OSHA talks about is, Mr. Employer, everything, uh, after you do everything you can to eliminate or reduce the hazard, uh, implement what's called PPE controls, personal protective equipment. Those are devices and clothing worn by the workers to protect them. So this is how OSHA looks at the problem. Number one, design the, the hazards out. Number two, uh, reduce the hazards. And number three, as a, the last resort, implement what's called PPE controls. Back a few years ago, uh, someone wrote to OSHA uh, because the, most of the OSHA standards we have today are over 20 years old, and there's nothing specifically in the OSHA standards uh, that say the, says the employer must do an arc flash hazard assessment. There's nothing, there's nothing worded in the OSHA standards that uh, imply that they must do that. So uh, what happened was uh, someone wrote to OSHA several years ago and saying, do we really have to do these arc flash assessments? Do we have to calculate the incident energies and, and put labels up and, on equipment and, and tell workers what to use? Well, OSHA wrote back in what's called a letter of interpretation. In fact, you can go to the website there listed you see on the slide and uh, download that letter yourself and you can read it yourself. And in that letter, uh, OSHA writes back and says, OSHA recommends that employers consult consensus standards such as NFPA 70E uh, to identify safety measures that can be used to comply with or supplement the requirements of OSHA standards for preventing or protecting and against arc flash hazards. So. OSHA recommends uh, that employers use a book called NFPA 70E. And NFPA 70E, which you see here on the next slide, has become the de facto how-to standard to meet OSHA regulations. Uh, it's the industry preferred consensus standard now to assess electrical hazards and implement safe work practices. It establishes something called shock and arc flash protection boundaries. It also determines something called hazard risk categories and the required personal protective equipment for each hazard risk category. Uh, there are actually five hazard risk categories, and each hazard risk category requires a different set of PPE, or personal protective equipment. And NFPA 70E, as you can see, uh, which is called the Standard for Electrical Safety in the Workplace, does comply with OSHA and all state occupational safety organizations. Now, NFPA 70E refers to other publications such as N uh, IEEE 1584 on how to actually assess the hazards, how to uh, assess uh, the degree of the uh, potential arc flash hazards. And what happened a few years ago, a major diversified chemical company 
actually studied 91 of their facilities all over the world, and they actually calculated the incident energy based on the IEEE formulas that are referred to in NFPA 70E. And they actually uh, they published a chart to, to show what they found. For example, the chart we're looking at, out of the 19,000 buses that they had looked at, 55% of the 19,000 buses were between 0 and 1.2 calories per square centimeter. That's, in some cases, considered a Category 0. They found 17% of the 19,000 buses between 1.2 and 4 calories. They found 9% of the 19,000 buses between 4 and 8 calories per square centimeter. They found another 9% of the 19,000 buses between 8 and 20 calories. And they found 4% of the 19,000 buses between 20 and 40 calories. However, they also found 5% of the 19,000 buses they looked at were over 40, up to 100 calories. In fact, they even found 1% of the 19,000 buses that exceeded 100 calories per square centimeter. Well, according to NFEA 70E, workers can work on anything under 40 calories and under if they're wearing the proper PPE, personal protective equipment. And NFEA 70E really describes the kind of PPE to be used for anything 40 calories and under. However, NFEA 70E does not have any type of PPE they recommend for anything over 40 calories. In other words, uh, anything over 40 calories can possibly kill a worker. And they do not recommend that any uh, worker be uh, subjected to anything over 40 calories. Those are killers out there. Well, we're going to learn on the next, uh, one of the next modules coming up, how to reduce the incident energy. And the incident energy, the potential arc flash energy, is really dependent on three factors. It's dependent on the current, which is actually the available fault current or maximum fault current that can that flow at that point in your circuit. Uh, by the way, the arc current can be as low as 38% of the available fault current. So if you do calculations, make sure you you use 38% possibly because this is a kind of a worst case condition. The voltage of the system has something to do with it. Generally, the higher the voltage is, the more serious the problem will be. And the time, how long does the arc flash last? And so we're going to look at ways to uh, reduce the incident energy by causing the arc flash to stop very, very quickly. And so the next slides, next module we're going to talk about will look at ways to reduce the amount of incident energy by affecting the time involved. For more information, please visit our website, follow us on social media, or call our technical hotline. Thank you for your interest and for taking the time to review this module. In this module, we reviewed the need for designing in electrical safety to reduce the probability of electrical accidents. This saves lives, reduces cost, minimizes downtime, and allows for compliance with the appropriate codes and standards. Please be sure to look at the other modules in this series to learn even more about designing electrical safety into your facility.